Hello and welcome. I hope you're all well. It is absolutely swelteringly hot at the moment. But that doesn't stop us here celebrating with our bite-sized worship. And we're carrying on with our fruits of the spirit. And this week we're looking at faithfulness. We've got a wonderful hymn that's been completed by Gareth and the team. Great is thy faithfulness. And I'm going to refer to that actually in the talk. Barbara Berry is going to be doing our reading. And as always, we thanks to Tim, who's put all this together. So I hope you enjoy this week as we sit in this what is quite an incredible hot period of time. And perhaps it's a good time to sit and reflect as to do anything else is far too hot. This week's opening prayer and closing prayer have both been taken from the Celtic Daily Prayer Book. I love it. I think it's an amazing prayer book to dip into. And it's got lots that takes us through the year of readings and prayers and scripture that we can reflect on. If you've not come across it, please do take a chance to get a copy or have a look online about it. It's really good. Let us pray. Enrich, Lord, heart, hands, mouth in me, with faith, with hope and charity, that I may run, rise, rest in thee. Amen. The reading is taken from 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honoured, just as it was with you. And pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not everyone has faith. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do the things we command. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers, to keep away from every, every brother who is idle and does not live according to the teaching you received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. We were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, labouring and toiling, so that we would not be a burden to any of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, in this week's Bite Size Worship, we're looking at faithfulness in Fruits of the Spirit. I chose the reading from 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. In this reading, Paul is sending out a very clear message to his sisters and brothers about needing the need to pray to help in spreading the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ as quickly as it can be done. He also makes reference to being rescued from evil and wicked people. But has that wonderful line, but the Lord is faithful. So we ask for prayer. He wants his disciples to spread the good news and be guarded about the perils along the way. But the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen and guard, guard us with confidence. And the God will direct our hearts to love our God and be steadfast in Christ. Paul is really putting this message clear to those listening. We have a faithful Lord who guards and protects us and directs our heart to be open to love him and to love Christ. When we think of the word faithful, what are the first words that come to mind? A few that came to my mind first were loyalty, friendship, solid, secure, dependable, reliable. And I could go on. But we build up here a clear picture of what it is to be faithful and to have some of that relationship elements that makes up being faithful. 
Paul in his letter is commissioning us all to go out and have belief in the Lord. The Lord is faithful and guards us and protects us. And the faithfulness is how we grow in faith. The solid foundation of our Lord is our rock. And if we live faithfully to God, he is always at the centre of our lives. Not just here in Thessalonians, but throughout the Bible, God challenges us to be faithful whilst also offering an outstretched hand to our neighbours. In many, many of the liturgies we use and Sunday in our services, we say there are two great commandments, to love God and to love our neighbour. Being faithful and to offering friendship in these two commandments. So faithfulness is a core part of Christianity. And Paul in his letters draws out many other points that are interwoven within faithfulness. The actions that we should be doing as Christians, our behaviours, our need and our desire to pray, to turn to God, to work in spreading his glory, the glory of God to all. I took Harry to school yesterday and as he walked along the road, to school, he sang the song that we sung at the family picnic. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. And he sung this at the top of his voice. As he walked along, parents were looking at him. But he was singing it so loud. And it was like a living and active outpouring of the good news. Harry knows Jesus loves him. He had faith and he's not ashamed or shy to those around him to tell this wonderful revelation. It was a proud, proud dad moment when one parent said, what a beautiful song. I thought, yes, it is a beautiful song, a simple song. Jesus loves us. And that, yes, we know. We all know that Jesus loves us, but to have that outpouring of saying it to the world, we perhaps sometimes don't follow, as Paul's words were to spread the good news as far and as quickly as possible. I would ask the question, where is our faithfulness? Living our life with faithfulness is not easy. It's challenging, it's conflicting. Paul says he commands us to stay away from those who have idleness and don't live according to tradition. I see where Paul's coming from. He warns us not in, to get embroiled with those who might encourage us to wander from being faithful. But that's a perfect juxtaposition. The people Paul is describing is the people we should be walking with. If we have faith with our Lord, we know his presence and his power will be with us. Our faithfulness carries us and fuels us and strengthens us. A well-respected theologian Spurgeon wrote, God writes with a pen that never blots, speaks with a tongue that never slips, and acts with hands that never fail. When we think of this image, it brings to life all we have in that perfection of our Lord and the reassurance in his ability not to fail us. It's an image that Spurgeon has given also to me encapsulates a Lord who is measured and consistent and caring. And when we have all these parts, how can we not strive to be faithful and committed in our life and relationship with God? I've had on my mind as I've been reflecting on this passage, that great hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. We have it here today in our bite-sized worship. Thomas O. Chisholm, who wrote this, came to Christianity at the age of 26. He astonishingly wrote 12,000 poems. It's said in many biographies about him that he led quite an unremarkable life. He was a teacher, a newspaper editor, an insurance agent, and in the latter part of his years he lived in a Methodist home for elders. He wrote in one of his notebooks, my income has not been large, 
at a time due to impaired health in earlier years, which has followed me until now. Although I must not fail to record here the unfailing faithfulness of a covenant-keeping God and that he has given me many wonderful displays of his providing care, for which I am filled with astonishing gratefulness. When you hear Thomas's witness, I would say he led far from a rem unremarkable life. He led quite a remarkable life. His life was filled with God's love and his own faithfulness to follow the Lord and to let him guide and protect him. When God, Paul says, but the Lord is faithful, he will strengthen you and guard you. It's been lived out here in Thomas's testimony. And I think it's most fitting that we end with the words that Thomas wrote. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Bite Size service. It's always a joy to put these together and all the people that contribute, like thank Barbara, Tim and Gareth. I hope this week continues to be a good week for you and as we navigate our way through this heat, that you all stay hydrated and safe. I'm going to use another prayer from the Northumbrian Community Trust the Celtic Daily Prayer. 
We seek a clear light to shine upon our troubled way. We ask you to give us clear directions. Where we have missed the way and wandered far, bring us back at whatever cost to our pride. Take away our stubborn self-will, for we know that your will alone is our peace. We seek that peace. Amen. Take care all. Goodbye.